ordained offices in the Roman Catholic Church. A deacon is at the disposal of the bishop in order that he may serve the whole people of God and take care of the sick and the poor. He is rightly called one who shows love for orphans, for the devout, and for the widowed, one who is fervent in spirit, one who shows love for what is good. The ministry is described as one of the service in the three areas, the word, the liturgy, and charity. As ministers of the word, deacons proclaim the gospel at the Eucharist. As ministers of the liturgy, they have the distinct role in the altar. And as ministers of charity, they involve themselves more intensely to the service of the poor and most abandoned. Deacons serve as the church's witness at the sacrament of holy matrimony, preside at the funerals, including various services, such as benediction of the blessed sacrament, and they may give blessings. A blessed day to everyone. Welcome to the Eucharistic celebration and the rite of ordination to the diaconate. This morning, we will witness the diaconal ordination of Brother Ronald Bongat Balase CSSR of Malinao Albay, a professed member of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, Redemptorist of the Vice Province of Manila. Our ordaining prelate is His Excellency Most Reverend Reynaldo Evangelista Didi, Bishop of the Diocese of Imus. Please all rise and join in the singing of the entrance hymn. Mentestorum visita in pleso per la grazia ue tu creasti pectora qui diceris paraclitus donum dei altissimi Fons vivus in his caritas, et spirita lis uncio. Tu septi formis munere, dextre dei tuo digitus, tu rite promisum patri. Sermone di tans cultura, accende lume en sensibus, infundi amore en cordibus, infirma nostri corpus, virtute firmans perpeti. Ostem repelas non gius, pacem quetones protinus, doctores hic te previo, vitemus omnium noxiu, hertesiamus ta patre, Nos camus a tue filiu, te utrius que spiritu, tretamus omne tempore, veni creator spiritus, mentes tuorum visita, in pleso per la grazia, tue tu creasti tempora. Amen. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear people of God, with hearts full of gratitude and jubilation, we gather today around the table of the Lord's Word and Sacrament, relying on His abundance of love and grace, this, our brother, will be ordained to the order of deacons. Through the laying on of hands and the invocation of the Holy Spirit, he will be consecrated as God's servant and minister of his church. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, he will help the bishop and his priests in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity. As we join Jesus' offering of himself to the Father, let us pray for our brother and for all the ordained ministers of the church. May we remain obedient and faithful to God every moment of our lives. May we live pure and holy lives. And may our lives be a living sacrament of God's love in the world. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us implore a forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these men, your servant, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Listen, the cry of the daughter of my people, far and wide in the land. Is the Lord no longer in Zion? Is her king no longer in her midst? Why do they provoke me with their idols, with their foreign nonentities? The harvest is over, the summer ended, but we have not yet been saved. I am broken by the injury of the daughter of my people. I am in mourning, horror has seized me. Is there no balm in Gilead, no healer there? Why does new flesh not grow over the wound of the daughter of my people? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night over the slain from the daughter of my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love 
be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you O lord when they had finished breakfast jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than this he said to him yes lord you know that i love you he said to him feed my lambs he then said to him a second time simon son of john do you love me he said to him yes lord you know that i love you he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying, but what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We will now proceed to the right of ordination to the diaconate. And let he to be ordained deacon please come forward. Brother Ronald Bangat Balase, CSSR. Present. Most Reverend Father, the Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the office of deacon. Do you judge him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with his formation, I testify that he had been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Reverend Father Victorino A. Cueto, CSSR, Vice Provincial Superior of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer or the Redemptoris of the Vice Province of Manila. My dear brother, please, religious, dear parents and family members of Brother Nosi, benefactors, Sisters and brothers in Christ. We are in a state of health crisis. The whole world is experiencing a pandemic due to coronavirus 2019 or COVID-19. But in spite of the health crisis, God remains a loving God for us, especially today in this Eucharistic celebration and ordination to the diaconate of Brother Ronald Balase, CSSR, 
Or for many of you, Brother Nossi, most likely from the song Nossi Balasi. <laughs> We are very few here in compliance to the government's protocol during this time of crisis. But many others are following us in this celebration via live streaming. What is a deacon? What is the role of a deacon in the church? The Dogmatic Constitution on the Church, Lumen Gentium, number 29, says, At a lower level of the hierarchy are to be found deacons who receive the, the imposition of hands, not unto the priesthood, but unto the ministry. For it's strengthened by sacramental grace, they are dedicated to the people of God in conjunction with the bishop and his body of priests in the service of the liturgy of the gospel and of works of charity. St. Ignatius of Antioch declares that deacons who are ministers of the mysteries of Jesus Christ should please all in every way, for they are not servants of food and drink, but ministers of the church of God. To be a deacon means to embrace a life of service. Maglingkod. Jakonia is a Greek word which means service. Brother Nossi, God called you to serve him and his people. Like the prophet Jeremiah, he formed you in the womb of your mother and dedicated you to be a prophet to the nations. Your priestly vocation is God's gift to you, but it is given to you because you have a mission to accomplish. Vocation is always for mission. So many people are suffering now because of the pandemic due to COVID-19. Many families are getting hungry because many parents lose their jobs. Companies are downsizing their employees to cope with the economic crisis, which is a consequence of the pandemic. Many children will stop getting education this academic year, even through flexible or blended learning being offered by the Department of Education because their parents have no means to buy the gadgets needed like computer an internet connection. I suppose you are very much attuned to these realities happening now, Brother Nossi. That's why you chose the reading from Jeremiah which describes the prophet's grief over the people's suffering. We heard in the first reading, My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Is the Lord no longer in Zion? Is the King no longer in her midst? So many people are experiencing pain, grief, uncertainties, and even hopelessness during this time. Some are even questioning God for these challenging times. But God's invitation for us is to remain steadfast even in times of difficulties. To believe in His love 
even in moments of suffering, sickness, trials, limited resources, and even persecution should strengthen our faith in God all the more. As ministers of God, bishops, priests, deacons, religious or consecrated persons are to lead the people to trust in God always, never to lose hope. In Psalm 94, it says, The Lord will not abandon His people. Non repellet dominus plebem suam. The Lord will not abandon His people. God will never leave us whatever happens. He is a faithful God, a loving God for all of us. The words of the prophet Jeremiah in the first reading echoes the words of Psalm 94 which says, Your people, O Lord, they trample down. Your inheritance they afflict. Widow and stranger they slay. The fatherless they murder. And they say, The Lord sees not. The God of Jacob perceives not. Understand you, senseless ones among the people. And you, fools, when, you, when will you be wise? Shall he who shaped the ear not hear? Or he who formed the eye not see? For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. Brother Nossi, with this assurance from God, do not be afraid to go to any assignment that will be given to you, not only as a deacon, but eventually as a priest. Do not be afraid to proclaim the word of God to his people. After the laying on of hands of the bishop on you, in a while it will happen. The prayer of consecration and the investiture with the stole and dalmatic. You will receive the gospel book with a beautiful but challenging reminder. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. And practice what you preach. Always have the faith and courage to tell the people God's faithfulness, God's love, in spite of all trials and difficulties that they are experiencing. God will give you His word and wisdom. The book of Jeremiah says, See, I place my words in your mouth. Today, I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms. Saint Alphonsus Liguri, the founder of your congregation, has this very important reminder for you and for all of us. He said, He who trusts in himself is lost. He who trusts in God can do all things. He fatherly added, When did it ever happen that a man had confidence in God and was lost. No one had hope in the Lord and had been confounded. You will be able to fulfill your mission from God if you have a deep love for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what is being reminded of you in the Gospel just read. The reason Lord asked Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than this? 
Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. At which Jesus said, feed my lambs. The Lord Jesus asked Peter three times. And Peter confirmed his love for Jesus. Brother Nosi, your life as a deacon and eventually as a priest should always be motivated by a deep love for the Lord Jesus Christ and his flock. Love. This should be your only motivation in following the Lord. Wala nang iba pa. Pag-ibig. Ang tanging dahilan ng iyong pagbibigay ng sarili sa Diyos at sa sambayanan. How will you prove and sustain your love for Christ and His flock? By maintaining a deep prayer life. Never miss your prayers. You can miss your meals, but not your prayers. Pwede ka magpasting, but never miss your prayers. Through your deep prayer life, you will be able to sustain your friendship and love for Christ. People always look at us, deacons, priests, and bishops, as men of prayer. Be faithful in praying the liturgy of the hours, which unites us to the prayer of the whole universal church. This is part of your commitment today as you receive ordination to the diaconate to pray the liturgy of the hours every day. Your breviary, do not forget it. From your deep prayer life, you will selflessly serve the flock entrusted to your care. Take care of the flock with deep pastoral charity. From your deep prayer life, you will always be compassionate to the poor, to the orphans, the sick, and the marginalized of society. From your humble prayer each day, you will surely receive graces for your ministry. St. Alphonsus Liguri said, The prayer of a humble soul penetrates the heavens and presents itself before the throne of God and does not live without God's looking on it and hearing it. Your love for God, Brother Nosi, is sustained throughout your life through your vow of celibacy. Ngayong araw na ito, pangangako ka na hindi ka mag-aasawa hanggang kamatayan. You will hear in the rite of celibacy in a while. Celibacy is both a sign and a motive of pastoral charity and a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. By living in this state with total dedication, moved by a sincere love for Christ the Lord, you are consecrated to Him in a new and special way. By this consecration, you will adhere more easily to Christ with an undivided heart. I hope and pray that you will be faithful to your commitment to celibacy, to Christ, for whom you offer yourself. St. Teresa of Calcutta has a very beautiful reminder for us about priestly celibacy. When she said, Priestly celibacy is not just not getting married, not to have a family. It is undivided love of Christ in chastity. It is not simply a list of don'ts. It is love. Freedom to love and to be all things to all people. This is celibacy. Finally, as a deacon and eventually as a priest, always love the Holy Eucharist. 
The Holy Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. Value the Holy Eucharist each day. Develop a Eucharistic spirituality as a deacon and as a priest. Why? The Eucharist is the beginning, means, and end of the priestly ministry. Since all ecclesiastical ministries and works of the apostolate are bound up with the Eucharist and are directed towards it. From Presbyterorum Ordinis number 5. Christ in the Holy Eucharist is the center of our life. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, you will live your life. St. Alphonsus Liguri, who has a deep love for the Holy Eucharist, said, The sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, infuses into the soul great interior peace, a strong inclination to virtue, and great willingness to practice it, thus rendering it easy to walk in the path of perfection. Our dear Holy Father, Pope Francis, also reminds us of the value of the Holy Eucharist in our life when he said, In the Eucharist, the one true God receives the greatest worship the world can give him. For it is Christ himself who is offered. When we receive him in Holy Communion, we renew our covenant with him and allow him to carry out ever more fully his work of transformation in our lives. From Gaudete et Exultate, my dear people of God, thank you for your prayers and support for, for Brother Nosi. Please continue praying for us that we may be faithful to our promises and commitment to God. We are also praying for you, especially in this time of pandemic due to COVID-19. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Perpetual Help, embrace all of us with her maternal love, always, especially in this time of health crisis and many challenges of life. Amen. The commitment to celibacy and examination of the candidate will now follow where Brother, Ro Brother Ronald Balase, CSSR, will be asked of his resolve to the life and ministry of a deacon. By your own free choice, you seek to enter the order of deacons. You shall exercise this ministry in the celibate state, for celibacy is both a sign and a motive of pastoral charity and a special source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. By living in this state with total dedication, moved by a sincere love for Christ the Lord, you are consecrated to Him in a new and special way. By this consecration, you will adhere more easily to Christ with an undivided heart you will be more freely at the service of God and mankind. And you will be more untrammeled in the ministry of Christian conversion and rebirth. By your life and character, you will give witness to your brothers and sisters in faith that God must be loved above all else and that it is He whom you serve in others. Therefore, I ask you, in the presence of God and the church, are you resolved as a sign of your interior dedication to Christ to remain celibate for the sake of the kingdom and in lifelong services to God and mankind? I am. Um... May the Lord 
help you to persevere in this commitment. Amen. Dear son, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Are you resolved to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Are you resolved to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I am. Are you resolved to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the Apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I am with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop, to your legitimate superiors, and to their successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please all stand. Dearly beloved, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of blessing on this man, his servant, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. Please all kneel. Lord, be merciful. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God,
Mercifully hear our prayers. 
and prosper by your gracious assistance what we are now to perform by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing this man we present, for in our judgment we believe he is worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office. You who remain unchanged, but make all things new, who in your eternal providence order all creation and make due provision for every age. Through him who is your word, your power and wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for the upbuilding of the new people, you grant that the church, his body, should grow and spread forth, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, joined together in the distinction amongst his members, and fastened in unity by the wondrous bond of the Holy Spirit. And you establish three ranks of ministers in sacred offices to serve your name. As one, you chose the sons of Levi, to minister in the former tabernacle. Thus, in the first days of the church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Lord, we beseech you, send forth upon him the Holy Spirit that he may be strengthened with the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May every gospel virtue abound in him, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, an assuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct, so that by the example of his way of life, he may attract the imitation of your holy people. May he remain strong and steadfast in Christ, offering the witness of a clear conscience by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve. May they be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
received the gospel of Christ. Whose herald you have become. And see that you believe in what you read. Teach what you believe. And practice what you teach.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for a good and a good of all His church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet, and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. The 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and the laity. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other with a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray grant o lord to your servants whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel of the sacraments and of charity through Christ our Lord Amen Please be seated Reverend Ronald Balazes CSSR will give his short message of thanks to be followed by the Vice Provincial of Vice Province of Manila Reverend Father Victorino Cueto CSSR Isang mabiyayang umaga po sa ating lahat. Tulad nga ng sinabi ng ating mahal na obispo sa kanyang misa, tayo ngayon ay nas nabubuhay sa isang natatanging panahon. Tayong lahat ay araw-araw na animoy nakikipagpatintero sa kamatayan. Tayo ay naglalakbay sa isang daang walang kasiguruhan dahil sa COVID-19. Sa nakalipas na ilang buwan, Ramdam ko ang hirap at sakit na kinakaharap ng marami sa ating mga kapatid. Marami sa ating mga kababayan ang nawawalan ng trabaho. Hindi lamang hatid ng COVID-19, subalit dulot ng pagsupil ng kanilang mga karapatan. Marami ang nawawala ng tirahan at nagiging palaboy sa kanyang bayang pinamumugaran ng yaman ng iilan at ng dayuhan. Dahil dito, Tagus sa buto ang gutom na dinaranas natin. Gutom tayo sa pagkain. Gutom tayo sa kapayapaan. Gutom tayo sa ustisya. Gutom tayo sa Diyos. Sa ganitong kalagayan natin ipinagdiriwang ang aking ordinasyon sa diakono. Katulad nga ng nabanggit ng ating mahal obispo, Ang bukasyon ng diakono ay para sa paglilingkod. Para sa akin, sa nangyayari ngayon, this is a real-time ministry. Para sa akin, ang pagtanggap ko ng banal na orden na ito ay napapanahon dahil sa kinasasadlakan nating kalagayan. Kung kaya tayo ay nabubuhay sa isang natatanging panahon na kung saan ang diwan ng pagiging diakono ang paglilingkod sa kapwa ay higit nating kailangang paigtingin. Ang Panginoon sa nakalipas na mga buwan ay halos araw-araw kong naririnig sa mga nagsasab na nagsasabing, pakainin mo ang aking mga tupa sa mukha ng mga homeless, ng mga stranded na kinukupkup namin dito sa baklaran. At subalit, siya rin ang Diyos na bukal ng biyaya at pag-asa. Naniniwala ako na sa gitna ng lahat ng ito, mananaig ang awa at pag-ibig ng Diyos tulad ng kung paanong binayayaan at pinagkatiwalaan niya ako ng bukas yung ito sa gitna man ng aking mga pagkukulang at kahinaan. Naniniwala ako na matatapos din ang lahat tulad ng kung paanong hinilom at pinawi ng Diyos ang, laha, ang aking mga sakit at sugat. Naniniwala ako na patuloy tayong bubusugin ng Diyos tulad ng kung paanong binusog niya ako sa pamamagitan ng mga taong tumil, tumalima rin sa kanyang panawagan na maging bas, kanyang pastol at ng sambayanan. Kung kaya sa lahat na narito ngayon, sa lahat na nakibahagi sa akin dito sa simbahan at maging sa mga live, sa live streaming, sa inyong lahat, Maraming maraming salamat. Salamat sa inyong mga suporta, aral at inspirasyon. At salamat sa patuloy na pagtitiwala, sa patuloy na pananalig at patuloy na pakikiisa. At special kong pinasasalamatan ang aking pamilya na hindi nakadalo ngayon sa Bicol, MAPA, Nasa TV na ako. Nanunod kayo ng live stream. Salamat!
Maraming salamat sa aking Redemptorist family sa paggabay at pagtitiwala higit sa lahat sa pagpapalago sa akin hindi lamang isang individual kundi isang misyonero. Maraming salamat sa aming Vice Provincial Superior Father Ino at sa kanyang council. Maraming salamat kay Father kay Most Reverend Ray Evangelista na sa gitna man ng COVID-19 ay binusog tayo ng kanyang presensya ngayong araw at at sa kanyang sa grasya ng Diyos pamamagitan niya sa banal na orden na ito. At maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga tumulong sa mga sa Baklaran Redemptorist Mission staff and volunteers sa multimedia team. Maraming salamat kay Father Mel at Father JM na naging punong abala sa araw na ito. Salamat sa mga postulants na naging aming altar servers. Sa Bicol, ang ekspresyon namin ng pasasalamat ay Diyos Mabalos. Ang ibig sabihin, ang Diyos ang magbabalik ng inyong mga kabutihan. Sa inyo pong lahat, Diyos Mabalos. The Bishop and the Redemptorist who are present are asked to please remain after the Mass for the picture taking. As part of our tradition, we invoke Mary's help for our newly ordained deacon and all the Redemptorists for the perseverance in the congregation as we sing Salve Regina. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in His church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May He, who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ, help you as you live according to His word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May He who has appointed you stewards of His mysteries, 
make you imitators of His Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, glorifying the, the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, 